Hello, I'm Seth Sweetser. I'm an assistant professor of medicine in the Division of Gastroenterology and Hepatology at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. And today we're going to be discussing an article to be published in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings entitled Optimizing Bowel Cleansing for Colonoscopy. And this article was written mainly because of the issue of inadequate bowel preparation. This is a frequent uh, occurrence. Approximately 30% of all colonoscopies, the bowel preparation will be inadequate. And this has potential adverse consequences, including missed pathology, need for repeat examinations, and increased rate of procedure-related complications. There are factors or predictors of an individual who may have an inadequate bowel preparation. And if such predictors or factors are present, then increased or intensification of education regarding the bowel preparation and using a more aggressive bowel preparation should be pursued. In regards to the predictors of an inadequate or suboptimal bowel preparation, uh, there's basically two sets of uh, predictors. One uh, entitled medical predictors. The second set of predictors is, uh, are, are factors that uh, outline whether a patient's uh, likely to follow uh, the instructions regarding colonoscopy preparation. So in regards to medical predictors, these include prior or previous poor bowel preparation, chronic constipation or use of constipating medications such as tricyclic agents or narcotics, obesity, diabetes mellitus, and prior colon resection. One might ask, well, wh how is a prior colonic resection predictive of an inadequate bowel preparation? Because one might assume there's less colon present. Well, actually, when you do a colonic resection, it disturbs the motility of the colon and that is actually predictive of inadequate cleansing of the colon on subsequent uh, preparation. Predictors of a patient not following instructions in regards to the bowel preparation include uh, Medicaid insurance, English not being the patient's first language, um, poor uh, patient activation, or this is uh, can be better thought of in terms of uh, not being very engaged in their health care, uh, poor uh, or low health literacy. Lastly, a, a longer wait interval be between the time the colonoscopy is scheduled and the actual date of the procedure. So if, any, if medical predictors of poor bowel preparation are present, uh, the patient should undergo a more aggressive bowel preparation and the gold standard is a four liter polyethylene glycol formulation administered in split fashion. And what we mean by split dosing is that half the preparation is ingested the night prior to the colonoscopy and the second half the morning of the procedure. This has been shown to be better tolerated and to result in better cleansing of the colon. If there are predictors of the patient not following instructions, then education needs to be intensified, particularly uh, giving both verbal and written instructions on how to carry out the bowel preparation. The article does touch on some special patient populations, including the elderly. So the uh, advanced age, arbitrarily defined as over age 65 or 70, is a risk factor for poor bowel preparation. And in this population, the, the gold standard four liter polyethylene glycol uh, formulation should be used. Of note, other uh, bowel preparations including sodium phosphate uh, can lead to renal phosphate uh, injury and uh, therefore should be avoided in this population. Uh, a commonly overlooked population of individuals that uh, often have a poor bowel preparation is the hospitalized individual. Many of the bowel preparations uh, used in uh, uh, clinical practice are tested and approved for ambulatory patients. So an individual who's hospitalized, they're more or less bed bound, 
they don't have the assistance of being able to walk and improve uh, gastrointestinal function. So we know ambulation improves bowel motility. So if a patient is given uh, a reduced volume preparation, such as a two liter go lightly uh, polyethylene glycol formulation, then uh, a suboptimal preparation is likely to be a, a, a product of that uh, less aggressive regimen. So all patients hospitalized, uh, relatively non-ambulatory, should be uh, given a more aggressive bowel preparation, the gold standard, four liters of gold lightly. So to summarize, uh, the steps that can be taken to optimize colon cleansing in preparation for colonoscopy include, one, giving both verbal and written instructions on the bowel preparation. Two, every bowel preparation should be administered in split fashion or split dosing. Three, minimize the interval, I didn't specifically touch on this, minimize the interval between when the uh, bowel preparation is completed to when the colonoscopy is scheduled. So that interval should be less than five hours. For every hour over five hours by which there's a delay in performing the colonoscopy since completion of the bowel prep, the risk of uh, an inadequate bowel preparation goes up by 10% for every hour. So you want to minimize that uh, interval and keep it l less than five hours. If patient predictors of uh, inadequate bowel pre pre preparation are present, then intensification of education in regards to instructions and use of a more aggressive bowel preparation should be um, undertaken. And uh, finally, ensure uh, appropriate uh, hydration uh, throughout the bowel preparation to minimize electrolyte abnormalities. And if these measures are followed, uh, patients should be able to tolerate the bowel preparation, uh, have an effective uh, cleansing of the colon to allow complete visualization, visualization of colonic mucosa, and uh, minimize missed pathologic lesions, and uh, finally be uh, safe for the patient. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.